Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Fish Locker Out for a Walk. Now the area that you can see around me is a little cove on the Lizard Peninsula. Now we're just coming up to daybreak. I don't know if you can see it, just at back in here. The area where I am is Mullion Cove. Mullion Hotel up there in the background. And just see the sun rising behind it. And the little area you can see down here behind me is Mullion Harbour. Now it's down on the west coast of the Lizard, down in Cornwall. And this little area that you can see behind me here is Mount Bay. So you're looking down towards Port Leven, then St Michael's Mount, Penzance, Mausel, all the way down the coast. I don't know how well you can see this here. It is a lovely little sheltered area. And I'm going to have a little walk down. A little walk down the cliff. And then I'm going to carry it on down into the harbour. See what we can find. But already, I don't know if you can hear the birds. It is a stunning morning definitely the best time of day to be out. We've got a couple of little islands, I don't know how well you can see them, down there in the background, which have got great seabird colonies. So hopefully we'll see some of those. Down in these little brushes here, I've already seen a couple of stone chats and some small small birds, it looks like great tits, blue tits, dunnocks, that type of thing. We'll have a walk through, see what plants we can find see what animals we can find and then we might go down to the water and see what else we can find just coming down this spot here we can see straight away we've got some sea pinks also called sea thrift got some nice daisies the yellow ones are bird's foot trefoil and there are what look like some little blue cornflowers now I can't remember the proper name for these, I just know them as cornflowers. But I'll look it up. We've got some red campions coming out of the bushes here. You notice how stunted all the growth is. Seagulls are making a rare racket down there, aren't they? You start to see the boats in the side of the harbour now. This little area in here is perfectly sheltered from anything, anything coming from the east. Because all of this is west facing. So even when you've got an easterly gale coming, this is still as sheltered as it is now. I don't know how well you can see, but there are some guillemots down there, I can see them. Water clarity seems to be alright. Here we have some sea beet. It's quite nice to eat that. Eat it um, as a substitute for spinach. It's very high in nutrients. Might collect some of that on the way back. Course. my good lady has got a catch and cook coming up well that's as sheer a cliff as ever you want to find one isn't it here are two of the little boats that still launch out of Mullion one of the things to note the people that maybe maybe aren't aware but the numbers that you see on boats are commercial registrations and it's the port where it's registered to so PZ Penzance PW, probably pad store. Falmouth is FH, Whitby, WY. South Shields is SSS, South Shields. You get the idea? Some odd crab pots, there's an old winch that you used to winch them up and down the, the slip. This slip right here. Is, um, it's not free, it relies on donations. So anytime you, if you're going to come down here and launch your boat, give a little donation. Now, I'm pretty sure that, that little stone building there is a net storehouse. And it is a listed building. I think it's been there since like 1850. Clarity of the water is fantastic today. It's because it was received so much shelter from the easterlies that we're having at the minute. Some little 
little patches of small fish. All the Eastleys we're getting are hitting the other side of the lizard. And the water on that side is really cloudy at the moment. Whereas you can see down here, it is crystal. I've actually done a nighttime shore fishing session of one of our older videos off of here. There's a big spider crab. I don't know well you can see that. It's just on the corner of there then. Cutting about. You see it is a stunning spot. In fact, what I might do is I have got my wetsuit in the back of the van. I can see some fish and some crabs. What I might do is I might might chuck my wetsuit on, see if I can get my snorkel mask out, and we will go for a look and see what we can find in the water. Only problem is I haven't got my weight belt. We'll see what we can do. I haven't got my weight belt so I might not be able to dive down. But we can certainly have a little look around. Let's get back up to the van and find out. Find out what we're gonna do. See I don't know if you can see but the areas down here, like that that patch there and that patch there, those are reefs, those are like pinnacles of rock. And they're maybe eight foot below the water. The top of the weed that you can see is about maybe four foot below the surface. The deepest points down there are probably going to be 12 to 14 feet. Yeah, I will give it a go. Just a quick one to show you, <laughs> if I can get you up there. As you see all these bits growing in the side of the cliff, this, here's a piece, is rock samphire. And it is, when you break it, it smells really fresh, like pine almost. A delicious edible. And hiding in there, that plush green one there, is some sea beet. Yeah. We'll collect some of that before we head home. For any of you that have watched our other videos and you've seen my style of crab pots that I use on the boat, this is a different style. Locally they call it a parlour pot, I just call it a top entry pot and what they have is they have a hard plastic entrance. So they only have one entrance like that and they have a door on the end which is held on with these so you open the flap at the end but you bait it with that elastic band on there and a crab or a lobster climbs up and falls in that entry and can't climb back out. Whereas mine have side entry doors I'll put a couple of pictures in here to show the differences but that's a local type and it's very good for catching spider crabs. Well, there we go. There's a, a side entry pot and there's a top entry pot.
These two are too small. So we'll let these go. Cracking male spiders. Perfect. <laughs> Good size of them. Dunkers, aren't they? Right. There's me two spider crabs. Two cracking male spider crabs. Tell they're a male by that narrow V and the size of these get claws. Tell they're nice and hard. They'll do perfectly. 
that was out in where I was looking for. Just all out and down there. That was roughly where I found that lobster but couldn't get it. Ah, oh, what a cracking little morning. I think I'm going to start leaving the wetsuit in the van just in case. I mean, because this was perfect. But two, two clunking great spider crabs there. Stacks of spiders around here. Just them. Um, sorry, my nose is a little bit full of salt. Found, must have found 50 spider crabs. Um, probably 45 of them were female. I found four decent males. Kept the two biggest, let the other ones go. But I went all the way that you can see, all the way right out past them rocks there, down this little side. Doesn't look as deep as it is, is it? Some of the spots I dived down to out there were over 10 metres. Right, cracking morning. Cracking morning and some great, some fantastic spiders. I think, what I'm, I think what I'm going to do now what, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get changed I'm going to pick some of that sea beat and some of the rocks on fire and we'll take these crabs home and we will get them cooked up Right, well I think it's about time we're going home See, the sun's come up now We've been out for, we've been out for a few hours it turned, out to, it turned out to be a fantastic morning I am glad I brought my wetsuit with me Didn't have my weight belt so I couldn't do an awful lot, but yeah, managed to get same. Um, I've got two fantastic spider crabs. I've picked some, uh, picked some of the sea beet, some of the rock samphire. The area where we were at, well, you, you can't really see it much now because the wind's starting to pick up. But um, I went out, out into the sand, out into the rocks, then out possibly to where that little boat is, and up and back round corner. Tons of fish, loads of little tiny ones. I don't know. I don't know how well the GoPro is going to show it. Um, loads of little tiny fish, some sand eels, some little pollock, loads of wrasse. I have seen some of the biggest wrasse that I've ever seen in my life. I'm definitely going to be coming back here to go wrasse fishing. I hope that it's shown up on the on the GoPro. There was one or two where they were just too fast for me and too deep, but there was some ballon wrasse round here that must have been in excess of six pound. They were like a carp. They were massive. Loads of ballon wrasse, loads of corkwing wrasse. Uh, I did see a lobster, I couldn't get it with my hands, and by the time I'd swum to shore and went and got, got my spike, Brittany, um, and come back, it had gone. So I just couldn't get it out. Um, it's a toss up, really, well, carrying a spear, we are, it's an inconvenience, and um, yeah, the chances of finding a lobster were, I wasn't expecting to, should I say. Can't complain about seeing it. I've got two. Uh, two amazing males. There were stacks, and I mean stacks of spider crabs. I'm definitely not going to be coming bait fishing here, like bait on the bottom, because it would just get absolutely mullered by spider crabs. I uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been interesting. This is Mullion Cove. We are going to continue with the coastal exploring uh, playlist, other areas in Cornwall, and then as as time goes on we will spread around the rest of the UK um, right now it's still early morning I'll be able to go back and we will look about preparing these if we have the time to do it we will do one now at the end of this video and if not then we'll do it as a separate catch and cook but yeah they are fantastic cracking wild edibles let's just have a little walk up now I've had to get completely changed I brought my wellies, <laughs> I brought my wellies down, so that I didn't have to walk in my booties. And by the time I got back to the van, it was just squelching, so I've changed into my trainers. We'll have another little walk back up to the top, and then we'll have a look down, and then we will uh, make our way home. It turned into such a lovely day that we decided that we would go out and we would enjoy the crab on the beach. So we're. Uh, I've had it. What time was I out this morning? It's been in a cool box. 
took it back and I kept it in a cool box for maybe three hours. I've just got high water now. So it shows you how long. It was low water when I got it and it's high water now. You can keep shellfish like crabs and lobsters okay in a fridge for a few days if you keep them cool. It's too big to fit in the fridge so I've kept it in a cool box and I've just got some ice in there. At the moment we're just down on a little beach and we're going to uh, cook it up in our little stove. You're building something. Right. We're just um, yeah, well, it's just glorious, isn't it? All I've got is I've just got it in a cool box, and these I keep in the freezer. So I've kept it cold. It's still alive down there in the bottom. I'll dispatch it in a moment. But one of the things what we what we say cooking them is very very simple. As with cooking, as with cooking crabs and lobsters at home, like I've tried to say to folks, you can use clean seawater if you can get it. If not, just use fresh water with salt added. Now I'll tell you what it looks like. You don't get much cleaner than that. Half it. Half that much. Perfect. Yes, so clean seawater if you can get it. If you can't, then fresh water with salt added. I've got the pan coming to the boil. It's going to take a while because it was cold seawater. And I'll just show you how I'm going to dispatch this spider crab and butcher it up. It's really simple. If you've seen any of our cooking videos at home, we like to put them in the freezer to chill them off, which puts them into a corner. You can't do that here. The simplest way to do it is if you peel this flat back here and then put a screwdriver up like that. And then if you can, I'm going to go into just where the mouth is and like that. There. Now, the majority of the meat is going to be in the claws and in the legs and these knuckles. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the back off. The easiest way to do that is you can see there's a little hinge there. If you can just break into that and then lift, you should be able to lift the back off. One second James, be careful you don't hurt your fingers. Like that, look. Right. These parts here, you can see, are its gills. Also called dead man's fingers. We don't want to eat those. And also, the parts inside of here are all of its internal organs. It's been scientifically proven that any of the harmful bacteria or chemicals that it's, it's ingested throughout its lifetime are concentrated in its internal organs. So we don't eat any of them, we just wash them away. So what I'm going to do is I will take all the dead man's fingers off. Right there you can see I've stripped off all the dead man's fingers, all of its gills. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break it in half and you just break it down this centre line here. And it just goes into two halves. Now I'm going to take it down to the sea and I'm going to wash out all of this goop inside of here. Right there you can see after I've washed all of the goop out the inside. All this here is meat. All of these knuckles are full of meat and the crows and the legs are full of meat. So we will wait there now until this oh. that's pretty much rolling boil. Right we'll introduce these to the pan now. Politely introduce them.
you can see how straight away it's dropped off the rolling boil and that's because the temperature of the crab has lowered the temperature of the water now we'll leave those there and uh, probably five minutes when it gets back to a rolling boil a full rolling boil again two more minutes after that and it's ready to come off full rolling boil now two more minutes right that's two minutes after the rolling boil I'll just go and take this water all we've done is laid out some flat rocks so that we can just put it in its shell on the rock and then we've both got a smashing stone a cracking stone to crack them open normally at home we would put it into iced water to help stop the cooking process because it's inside a shell the shell holds heat so it will keep cooking afterwards um, obviously we aren't doing that right now but we're going to eat it straight away so it doesn't matter and we've just got some butter and lemon each joint of this you can see is absolutely packed with crab meat one of the things that I, I've done ever since I was a young'un was if you take the end of the claw like the proper little finger if you don't have a pick you can pick it out of there with that but all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all of these onto this plate and then sit and eat it by taking my knocking rock and my flat one you can just a lot there. one of the things you might not know is with, with crabs and lobsters the movable part on the inside of it there is a piece of cartilage so you need to take it out there look that hard piece there you need to take that out but the rest of what's on there is prime crab meat. There you can see inside there is all just chunks of white meat. down there. Oh, are you fixing it, are you? All right. It's like a seagull. Well, there we are. We've got um, we just just like it with a bit of lemon juice. You want if you wanted to, you could melt a bit of butter or have some fresh bread. It's uh, just nice to eat. We've uh, I must confess. I forgot that we were making a communal pile and I started eating some of it. <laughs> but it's um, as you can see, it's just like white crab meat. Doesn't taste exactly the same. Doesn't taste the sweet. I think I prefer edible crab. Yeah, James um, can't have shellfish because his immune system is still low. It's too much of a risk for him to eat something like this. So we just don't chance it because it's not worth it. When he's um, also, he's, he's, uh, his taste for shellfish isn't probably as advanced as ours. I mean, when I was a youngster, I didn't enjoy lobster and crab as much as I do now. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed us. I enjoyed joining us on the show. Uh, I hope it's been interesting for you. Let me know if you try it. Um, one thing, please be sure to check the notification button if you're subscribed to the channel make sure you've ticked the notification bell and selected all notifications so that you get notifications the next time our video comes out uh, i wish you all the best have a nice day and we'll see you later There we have a tonker in its natural habitat. <laughs>